a solar charger that needs your help, an electric car goes faster than all the others, a solar plant earns their salt, your breath becomes powerful. Do I need a breath mint? No, we're good. And a story with some style that Doc Brown would be proud of. This week on... There are a lot of solar chargers out there for your gadgets, so what's one more, right? This one must be different or else we wouldn't be mentioning it on the show. True, this one needs your help. Over at Quirky.com, a young inventor has a nice little solar charger for pre-sale. The little charger has a suction cup that lets you stick it to the window while facing the solar panel out. It also comes with a sand so you can just place it on the windowsill. If you pre-order, you can get the little charger for $39.99. And last we checked, they needed about another 900 sales to move it into production. Great Scott! Great Scott! A few weeks ago we had an EV that could go a thousand miles on a charge. This week we bring you an EV that breaks the land speed record. You mean faster than the Trust SSC that went 763 miles an hour? No, this is the electric car land speed record. Oh, then you mean faster than the Buckeye Bullet that went 495 miles an hour? Nope, this is the land speed record for an electric car that is under 1100 pounds. I am so confused. Students at Brigham Young University got their electric car to go 139 miles per hour. What's the big deal? Lots of cars go 139 miles an hour. This is big news because the faster you want an electric car to go, the bigger and heavier the batteries need to be. If they can get an 1100 pound car to go faster, then it will move the tech forward and make for better cars in the future. I get it now. See? Scott, what's the biggest issue with solar power? I'd say it's either that the best efficiency we have is about 29% or that the sun is only up for roughly half the day. I'll go with the second one. In our next story, the Gemisolar Heliostatic Plant has a new way to make solar viable 24-7. Do they put mirrors in a geostatic orbit around the Earth all aiming the sun's energy at the plant? No, but that's a really cool idea. Thanks! The plant has a vat of molten salt that's kept hot by the sun's energy. That was in a spy movie, and if you move the laser, it blows up, right? The plant has 2,600 mirrors aimed at a centrally located molten nitrate salt tank that heats up to 900 degrees. The excess heat is then stored in the molten salt. All of this heat spins turbines, producing electricity 24 hours a day. It has an annual production total of roughly 110 gigawatt hours a year, enough to power 25,000 homes and reduce atmospheric CO2 emissions by more than 30,000 tons a year. This world first is just outside of Seville, Spain. Wait! It was Sahara! It was in the desert and they were using it to melt waste! Not what we're talking about. No. Okay. Hi, I'm Jeannie. I'm Eco Geeko's wife and you're watching Green Tech Weekly. For our next story, researchers at the University of Wisconsin-Madison have figured out a way to use a piezoelectric effect in your breath to produce a small amount of electricity. The hope is to use this to run a small blood pressure monitor and other sensors that can be implanted in your body that don't need a lot of power. They aren't sure if this will make it to the operating room near you, so I won't be holding my breath. Really? You went there? I couldn't help myself. For our last story, we have something that's really started the buzz around the internet. I know, we both want one and it's not even 2015 yet. DMC Motor Company has announced that they are making an all-electric version of the iconic stainless steel DeLorean. They swapped out the V6 engine for a 260 horsepower equivalent electric motor. That's heavy. Great, Scott. Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? No, no, Jason. Go on, go on. Okay. The prototype is able to get anywhere from 70 to 100 miles per charge with its flux power system created by California-based Aptera. Does it run on a huge capacitor? No, actually it runs on batteries. How many does it take for 1.21 gigawatts? Great, Scott. Where are you getting these questions from? But no, it's not 1.21 gigawatts. Good, because that would take a long time to charge. Can you go 88 miles per hour? The car will have a top speed of 120 miles per hour. Great, Scott! Great, Scott! 
the planned price for this retro icon from the future is going to be $100,000. Great Scott! Why do you keep saying that about yourself? You just don't get it, do you? No. No plan if Sunbeam plans to come up with a power system for it yet or not. Maybe we can charge it with plutonium or with a bolt of lightning. Both of those could be dangerous and would have to be timed just right. Look for sales to start later next year, but remember to not park it on any train tracks. I knew you got it. Thanks for watching another Tech Field Show. For more info about this week's stories, check us out on greentechweekly.tv, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and remember to rethink it green. That's heavy. Great Scott! <laughs>